Good morning, everyone. This is Heidi Zemer from the Western New York Library Resources Council. I want to welcome you to Digitization, Metadata, and Content DM, Partnering to Build Your Digital Collections, being presented by the team at Backstage Library Works. And I am really excited for this program. Um, in the past, we've had many people work with them to uh, partner for building digital collections in New York Heritage and New York State Historic Newspapers. And I hope if in particular, if you're planning on an RBDB, applying for an RBDB grant this year, um, or you're planning, thinking about adding your collections into New York Heritage and New York State Historic Newspapers, that this um, session will have a great benefit for you. So I am going to turn this over to Thomas Forsyth, who is going to give us some uh, housekeeping information in introductions. Thomas. Thank you, Heidi. We appreciate the Western New York Library Resources Council inviting us to speak today, and welcome to everyone for joining us for today's webcast, Digitization, Metadata, and Content DM, Partnering to Build Your Digital Collections. We're broadcasting today from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania in Provo, Utah. I'm Thomas Forsyth, Northeast Accounts Rep for Backstage Library Works, and I'd like to introduce today's presenters. Caitlin Costales began working with Backstage in 2016 as a quality assurance technician and was promoted to a digitization project manager in 2019. She previously interned with the Monroe County Historical Association, where she organized a local property deeds collection. Paul Boyko is a programmer at Backstage who originally started in 2007 as a digital QA technician and has worked in our technical services department for over nine years. And Kelly Brawl is Vice President of Digitization Services at Backstage Library Works in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. As a senior manager, Kelly has been a key player in collaboratively planning and carrying out archival reformatting projects for years, serving hundreds of institutions from national libraries to small town historical societies and organizations at every level and niche in between. We will be recording today's presentation and that recording and the slides will be available to you in the coming days. We'll email you a link. We have more than 40 participants registered to join us today, so all attendees' lines are muted. Please direct any questions or comments through the messaging window. Now, without further ado, Caitlin, tell us about today's presentation. Thank you, Thomas and Heidi. For today's presentation, we will take you through the life cycle of a digital project, which in the end will be ingested into a content DM or an equivalent digital asset management system. We will also discuss best practices for preparing and planning your digital project. Before we get started, we have a short poll for you so we can better understand your current relationships with digitization. Please take a moment to answer the, this uh, quick poll. What stage are you working on for your digitization project? Right, it looks like the majority of you are just getting ideas, deciding which collections to digitize, uh, with many of the remaining uh, falling into planning stages, determining workflows and costs. Thank you for taking the time to answer our poll. Caitlin, I'll hand things back off to you. Okay. In this section, Kelly and I will discuss best practices for the planning stages of digital projects, which include preparing the metadata to be included with the digital collection and processing the physical materials for capture. The first step for any digital project is to decide what the end goal is. You should determine how you want the final product to appear for the end user and how the end user will use the digital collection. Content DM is an intuitive program which allows users to organize collections into objects to make searching within a collection streamlined and simplified. The key is to determine the level needed to distinguish one object from another and the amount of detail that is needed for the metadata connected to each object. An object can either be a folder, a volume, or a newspaper issue, and will contain the individual files belonging to that object, as well as the metadata connected to the object. Metadata usually will change from object to object. 
In determining what metadata should be used, ask yourself what is important for the end user to know and how the collection will be searched. For example, in a correspondence collection, you may want the letters to be organized by the author of each letter, where the author's name will change with each object. No matter what level of detail is needed for the objects, it is important to use standards to ensure that the metadata is consistent across the collection to increase searchability. Once you've, once you've determined the metadata that is needed, the next step is to organize and process the materials for digitization. Let's go back to that correspondence collection. Now you've decided you want the letters organized by the author, but the letters are placed loosely in boxes with little to no organization. Our recommendation would be to organize the letters into folders by author to match how the collection should be digitally structured in the final build. While you're organizing the material, we recommend processing the material for di digitization to make it camera ready. Backstage uses the term camera ready to describe material that needs little or no, or no preparation before going on camera. Kelly will now discuss some best practices to ensure your material is camera ready. Thanks, Caitlin. So in terms of camera ready, we use that term to help institutions prepare their materials so that they can go on camera. Here at Backstage, we're determining the equipment and methodologies in best practices to minimize the risk of damaging materials during the digitization project. So, in terms of camera ready, we're talking ideal. We do anticipate that there will be some handling. So we'll talk about prepping materials and ensuring they're camera ready, but please understand that we do anticipate there may be some things that the camera technicians will have to handle, and we certainly understand that. So first recommended material preparation steps is to remove enclosures. For example, you would go through the collection and remove staples, paper clips, all metal fasteners, Again, if you leave one or two in, we understand that. But if you send an entire collection with staples and clips, just understand that the vendor would have to spend time removing those. We use overhead cameras with glass to flatten items. So if your newspapers are currently being stored folded, we'd recommend that you would unfold them and start flattening them so that the creases re would relax and be easier. And again, camera ready for our technicians. In terms of what a vendor like ourselves would do, we would capture everything in its entirety. So if you're sending a collection and you're processed it, and you see there's a lot of loose ephemera, notes, sticky notes, and things that you know don't pertain to the content or you don't want digitized, we recommend that you either remove them or flag them to signify to our technicians on camera not to capture certain content. In terms of bindings and our equipment, we do anticipate that most things will lay flat and be captured to up with 180 degrees. Um, we do have different equipment that can handle uh, fragile and bindings that can open. But again, going back to preparation and what might be camera ready, if you're processing a collection, you see that the bindings are loose, fragile, the pages start to break before you, while you're turning them, you may go ahead and you know, release those bindings or remove them in their entirety or if they're very tight and you can't visually see the content in the gutter, you've either removed the bindings or you've started to snip the strings so that they will be easy and lay flat under the glass at 180 degrees. Additionally, our recommended material preparation steps include, again, flattening with glass. So if you have a collection that is housed in three ring binders, understand that our glass can't come down, will get scratched. So you would remove things from three ring binders or studs or metal grommets. Again, back to ephemera and capturing everything that you send us, part of your preparation steps and making it camera ready would to be to weed duplicates. We understand that the content and the structure and the housing is important for your collection. So if you have a lot of weeded uh, content that is duplicate and you don't want to remove, you would flag it to again, initial to our uh, camera technician to skip over those. So that's part of the preparation and making it camera ready. In terms of microfilm and camera ready, it's a different piece of equipment. They're scanners. Uh, we like to ask that clients understand their microfilm collection and that the material, the film is sturdy and polyester based and in good condition. 
Does that mean if you have acetate film and we can't digitize it? Not necessarily. But if you're familiar with microfilm and vinegar syndrome and you know that your film has got a stinky odor, uh, it's likely starting to deteriorate. You can send it to us, we will assess it and we do perform, uh, we do provide some microfilm services here on site with duplication. If we feel that the content or the microfilm is not sturdy enough to digitize, we would then contact you for uh, recommendations. Again, these are all things that we call camera ready and recommendations. Um, if you send materials and we feel that additional prep is required, or we really can't handle things to minimize risk, we would reach out to you and ask permission to do any and all preparation. Thank you, Kelly. We're gonna pause for a moment for any Q&A questions that you may have. There will be another Q&A session at the end of this presentation. So if you don't have your question typed in right now, we can come back to it later. Uh, while we're giving everyone a moment to type in any questions they may have. Kelly, uh, why don't we start off with, do you have any recommendations for dealing with different uh, material types when organizing, such as transmissives versus loose pages? I do. Uh, a lot of collections are mixed format, and we do anticipate having to handle that. So if you go, go back to a correspondence collection and you know that there are some 35 millimeter negatives or four, four by five negatives, that's a different format or piece of equipment. We're using reflective lights to capture the correspondence themselves and a different piece of equipment with a light box to capture the negatives. If they can remove, be removed and separated, that's the best case scenario, but at least flagged and identified ahead of time to let us know that the collection contains these different formats is helpful. All right. It looks like we don't have any questions coming in just yet, so let's move on and we can um, have another Q&A at the end. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Thomas. As part of the digitization process at Backstage, we will collect the necessary metadata for the objects in a collection. We can collect this metadata using different methods and methodologies, as well as rename and further sort the files into their corresponding objects to upload into ContentDM. We also ensure that the file names will connect to each object in a consistent manner to make the collection easily searchable once uploaded. Let's circle back to the planning stages of a project where you will determine the level of detail needed for that project. This is where the sources of metadata will come in. Depending on what may, metadata will, need, will be needed to be collected for each object, the level will range from less detailed to most detailed. And depending on the level of metadata will be collected using various methodologies. I will go through a few of the levels today. Client provided metadata is usually when the client or institution provides file names using a spreadsheet or equivalent universal file format for us to collect and rename the files with. Metadata can range from being simple to being very detailed. We have an example of a file naming sheet in the next slide. On the other hand, structural level metadata is a little bit more in depth, but typically just reflects how the collection is physically organized. This metadata is usually collected from the source material and can contain either volume numbers, box numbers, folder numbers, or even issue dates. Item level metadata is the most complex and detailed of the three sources. This metadata can be collected if each item in the collection will be its own object rather than say a folder or a box or a volume. And each of those items will receive its own unique file name. For example, let's say you decide that the letters in that correspondence collection should each be its own object rather than sort it into a folder based on the author. In this case, each letter will receive its own unique file name rather than each folder. As promised, this is an example of a client file naming sheet. Our technicians would simply match either the box number or folder number up with the file name that was provided by the client. 
Another aspect of, content D, of a content DM build is collection level met metadata. Although object level metadata changes with each object or item, collection level metadata will remain static across the entire collection. To assist our clients in planning out the static metadata, we provide a metadata template for the clients to fill out. This template also serves as a guide to determine metadata standards to use for the collection. This is the template that we use for our clients to help them fill out. During the planning stages, we can assist the clients with formatting and identifying the collection level metadata, but the metadata is, is generally provided by the client as we look to them as the experts of the collection. Once the material has been digitized and the metadata collected, the files will now be ready to ingest into content DM. Prior to uploading the files, we will rename them and organize them in, into their corresponding objects. As part of your file suite from Backstage, you will receive a set of content DM files that we strongly encourage to not touch and keep backed up. Additionally, you will also receive another set of files that can be accessed outside of your build, which might include archival quality master TIFFs, PDFs bound per object, and JPEGs. And then Kelly will wrap up the presentation. Thank you, Caitlin. Yeah. So in summary, I like this visual. I think it gives everybody a perspective of the starting point of, you know, assessing a collection that you want to digitize understanding how the collection is going to be searched back to the metadata and who your audience is going to be and then processing it printing it out or digitizing it yourself in terms of digitization there is the metadata that's provided by you and there's the metadata that a vendor will do like caitlin explained object level um, metadata in terms of when we're doing our quality assurance and digital capture once all of that has been tied together renamed and we have a perfect suite and files ready for ingest into content DM or another similar digital asset management tool. We ingest those and then it's up to you to serve those up to the your users and then to maintain the digital files. Thank you, Kelly and Caitlin. This has been our uh, presentation for today. We're gonna to move into another Q&A period right now. If you'd like to type any questions you may have into the sidebar. Uh, we'll start off with a question from Paul Canova. If a library already has digital images, can you gather metadata and build the collection for us? How is gathering the metadata different in that case? I think Kelly will be able to answer that. Um, how more experience with that. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Yes. If a library already has digital images, can you gather metadata and build the collection for us? How is gathering the metadata different in that case? That is a good question. So basically you have the files already digitized, but you'd like us to go through and collect the metadata. Yes, we can do that. We've done a few projects like that. We would review with you the number of files that you have in what format, preferably if you have TIFFs. If not, that's fine. Uh, we would typically receive them on a hard drive and then have part of our team in the digital department go through and view them and then they collect that metadata. If you remember during the presentation, there was a visual of one of our technicians sitting at a PC and they had the asset, they had to make the images up on one side and the metadata on the other side. It basically go through and collect the metadata by viewing the images. All right, giving everyone a little bit of extra time to type any questions you may have. Um, Kelly, would you like to go into um, some of the reasons that you may have uh, for choosing between the three different levels of uh, recording metadata for content DM? Sure. Um, it all depends on, I think the best question is to ask yourself, how do you or your researchers or users of the collection now find something? If 
they can find it by the box number and the folder information. It may be suitable to just do box and folder. If you have an extensive finding aid and really letter level um, object level or item level metadata is more preferable or easier to search the collection, then you may want to go to that more extensive level and do each letter in a correspondence. Um, typically newspapers is issue level, um, not basic. It's basically not a bound volume of six months of newspaper, but each newspaper issue is the, the metadata. Cynthia Van Ness has a question. If a collection has to be disassembled, like the postcard album in your slide, how do uh, we or you ensure original order so that the album can be reconstructed after digital capture? I can take that question. That's a good, that's a good question. Um, there are various ways that you can ensure that the collection would be in the same order. Um, if say you have to organize it so it's the structure, physical structure of the collection will be digitized based on how you want it to look in the content NAM build, but you have to put it back in say its original order once you receive the material, we would recommend keeping, maybe creating a finding aid, um, keeping notes um, based on how the original material was organized before you um, restructured it. If this is a case where, say, you have a, a diary and inside the diary there's inserts or notes, but you want the those pages, those notes to be take, captured separately or say captured at the end of the notebook. But once you receive the material back, you want to put those notes back into the exact locations you found in the diary. You could create flags to insert into the diary paper flags, if you will, um, where our, te our technicians would skip over those flags during scanning. And then once you receive the material back, you can place the um, items back into those corresponding locations based on the flags. Paul, do you have any recommendations for Content DM when reviewing current collections um, uh, to prepare for adding new ones that might have slightly different information? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so, not all collections are going to be cookie cutter, obviously. Um, but uh, where you can follow, where you can use a common schema, if you will, for multiple collections to keep them similar. If you find that your needs are falling into like in the same category or falling into a, a certain pattern. You could certainly um, reuse uh, configurations um, that are used by Content DM or any other, uh, the same theory applies to any other digital asset management systems. Um, but you have to consider that um, prior, uh, obviously these are the things you take into consideration um, when you're determining what you're, how you're going to organize the collection, how you're going to name it, and of course how file naming is going to affect that just like we were talking about as far as order, like you were talking about how things would physically go back together. Uh, in the end, logically, in the presentation to the end user, how that all collates and falls into place, um, it can vary from collection to collection. It all basically, it's all based on what you're dealing with. Obviously, a schema that would use for newspapers would not be applicable to letters, uh, manuscript material, and so forth. And that's certainly not like for simple compound objects or simple objects rather, like in the case of just a, where we're collection, collecting a, a just one facing of a postcard or something similar to that. Effect. Caitlin and Kelly, do you have any recommendations for material that can't be broken apart but has multiple sections, uh, such as a scrapbook? <sighs> Um, in terms of a scrapbook, um, it all comes down to the handling and fragility and whether things can be easily handled. Um, we've dealt with different types of scrapbooks, scrapbooks that are intact, very large, multiple layered, paste downs, um, 
just a quick assessment to make sure that things can be handled easily and they didn't become detached or loose. Um, oftentimes the glue has, the residual glue has dried and the paste downs are no longer in their original location. Just a quick assessment to thumb through and make sure that things are intact or, care, or carefully placed or in their original location. Um, this may be an example of when you don't remove clips and things because that's what's holding them in place. Um, it's really not one solution for every scrapbook collection. <laughs> They're all unique in their own way. Um, but I think just going through and understanding the handling um, and what would be required to make sure that all of the paste downs and layers can be carefully captured. Oftentimes, it, it just makes sense to capture it, a bound scrapbook as a two-up spread um, and understand that you want to keep the integral visual of the scrapbook two-page spreads with multiple paste downs and layers. Um, we rarely recommend anymore that you consider each separate item its own entity or uh, content DM object, but consider the scrapbook itself as the object and not the individual items, paste down, booklets, brochures, clippings, photos, but the, the scrapbook itself. What do you consider best practices for creating digital backups? For creating digital backups. Um, okay, so, so like when, when we're delivering, a, like when we deliver a, an entire collection to a client. Um, so obviously they would want to put that first off in addition to storing it on obviously on disk somewhere uh, physically, uh, they want to do that in at least two locations, two different media type formats. Um, so in addition, because you never just want to rely on your collection sitting on the web server, where it's going to be um, access you know, for the world to see. Uh, you also want that somewhere else uh, compressed, you know, some, somewhere put um, tape media, believe it or not, it's probably one, one of the best uh, ways to back that up. But the ideal is to at least have it in two, in two different locations, two different media sets for that. And uh, preferably, um, like if one it would happen to be cloud-based or somewhere, usually not in the same physical location. All right. It looks like that's all the questions we have. Thank you again for joining us for today's webinar. If you do have any questions in the future or if you'd like to discuss any projects with us, please don't hesitate to reach out for the contact information below.